So most homesteaders either have a Joe Salatin or a John Siskovich poultry tractor. What most people don't have is access to ask questions about raising their poultry on the pasture, problems they're having with poultry on their pasture, and how not to go into debt raising their poultry. So we attended this three-day annual event in Dallas, Texas, and got to hear some speakers that had some experience with some pasture poultry for over several years. The most refreshing thing about this event was to have so many people with experience be so transparent and try to share their secrets with us to be successful in our ventures. Jason from So The Land was one of the many speakers that were at this event and we actually got to interview him. We'll put that towards the end of this video. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. This conference was set up very well. The talks wasn't too long and it wasn't too short and the breaks was long enough where you could talk to the suppliers and vendors and also use the restroom. One of the nuggets that we learned was from 413 Farms. She's actually out of Oklahoma and she comes down to the Dallas Farmers Market and she was saying that she noticed that different cuts of meats doesn't sell too well. One of the butchers actually stood up to confirm what she was saying and explaining different cuts that actually sell, the cuts that don't sell. So those are some of the things that you only get as a member talking to people like this. At the end of the conference, we got to hear the lunatic farmer himself Joe Salatin talk about the momentum that he sees the APA uh, from the past to the current and where it's heading out from here on out. Joel actually pronounces it a Peppa and he was really sharing with us what he would like to happen with this organization. Um, we are really trying to onboard make it grow so that those of us that want pasture raised chickens to have a voice. We can only have a voice with more people. We got to ask some of the pioneers like Jason from Sober the Land and some friends on what their name is, what the name of their farm is and where it's located. My name is Nick Gann. I'm from Central Arkansas. My farm is Gann Farm Raised and we sell beef, poultry, uh, eggs and layer hen. And my name is Tyler Froberg with Froberg's Farm. Our main crop unlike everyone else here at the Apple <laughs> Conference, is strawberries. So we're diversified fruit and vegetable farmers. Uh, we grow everything from strawberries and blackberries to Christmas trees and grapes. However, we do grow a few poultry. We're in Alvin, Texas, oh. about 20 miles south of Houston. My name is Jason from Sow the Land Homestead, on, on Sow the Land on YouTube. And we're from North Carolina. Okay. Um, I'm John Siskovich. I'm actually with Farm Marketing Solutions. I have another YouTube channel <laughs> and I, uh, I create chicken content. I get people from zero to three years on the field and producing, get your first step started. And when you grow past that, we have APA. I'm Daniel Salatin uh, with Polyface Farms of Virginia and serving uh, your president of APA organization, Pasture Poultry. So okay. Uh, Took that role in March. How long they've been an APA member, if they are an APA member? Yeah. I am not an APA member. I just learned about APA 30 days ago. <laughs> it was very hospitable. Yeah. It didn't matter how big your farm was or how small your farm was. It was one group of people who realized we weren't competitors. We've been an APA member since 2017. This is my first time oh, wow. at an APA conference, but my uncle has been to three in the past. Yeah, I've always wanted to come to this conference. I just felt like, you know, I'm, I just do like homestead, right? Like we just grow for ourselves. So I always thought it was like a conference for a bigger scale, like I'm selling chicken, which, which I'm not currently, but uh, I always thought it was for that. But after coming here this week, I feel like, no, it's, it's about, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Anyone that wants to get into pasture poultry, like this conference is, is for you, like even if you're not selling. But you get to talk to these people and, and it's so interesting to see what they're doing and where they came from and hearing their story and how they started and everyone just kind of started just like us. Yeah. You know, just growing for themselves and they just kind of grew from there. So hearing that is pretty special. One of the reasons why I create content I made the book is because I want more people to get into this movement mm -hmm. and the general ethos of APA is that there are no trade secrets. Everybody is a free sharing of information and everybody wants everybody else to succeed. The rising tide lifts all ships. So when you come to APA, you're no longer the crazy chicken person because <laughs> we're all crazy chicken people and I've been coming to this for years and years now. The first one started is about 60 people 
in a small convention center in Arkansas, and here we are, 300 plus people. Oh wow! And it's growing. There's more information. There's more innovation, and the focus on not growing more birds, but growing more profit into your birds. And whether you're doing it for money or not, you don't want to be spending extra money if it's just your homestead. You know, you're just saving some money, you're getting a good uh, product. If you're growing as a business and you're serious about it, this is the room where you're going to find all those all those little tips and tricks. The benefit of APA and coming to a conference like this, this is this lights the fire. This sets up your year. This is the one conference I'll never miss. Yeah. You know? And that only works if you have the mechanism in place to keep supporting the members throughout the year. They do monthly phone calls where you can get on and have your questions answered with um, board members and different members of APA. There no more free sharing of information. There's a discussion board where I get, um, my preferences are that it batches all of the responses to a daily email. So it's the first email in my inbox every morning. You open it up, sometimes you want, you look at it and you're like, I don't need to see any of this today. And sometimes you're like, I was struggling with this <laughs> and there's the answer. Or if you're struggling that hard and you know what your pain point is, you can post it on a discussion board and there's that body of knowledge that is uh, su supporting you and you'll find the answer for it. The American Pasture Poultry Producer Association is about um, a lot of peer-to-peer -peer education um, of the pasture poultry space mm -hmm. and the educational support that new pasture poultry people need to get started, grow, um, and at the end of the day create lasting relationships, not just peer-to-peer -peer, but also from market to producer, um, feed to grower, um, hatchery, all of the things we need to be successful. So from, from chick to customer, mm -hmm. right? Creating those connections to build a, a lasting framework for all of those folks to be successful in raised pasture poultry. The reason people should be involved with APA is anybody who has chickens, really, I'm serious. If you have some chickens, we do that. Because we want to be the go-to place of information to help you solve problems. I mean, it's everything from my chickens aren't laying, to my bedding <laughs> smells, to a fox ate everything. What do I do? All those things. So if you've got five backyard chickens or 10,000 chickens, layers, meat birds, turkeys, waterfowl, you should be involved in this because what's really interesting is most times somebody's either already done what you're struggling with and figured it out or talking a problem out as some of the best ways to solve it than just sitting there mulling it over in your own head, <laughs> yeah. right? You get yeah. lost in your own head. That the support is in here mm -hmm. to be better out there, you know? And so don't, if you, anybody who starts going in becoming secretive or patenting and all that stuff, they don't last long here because that's not what we want to foster. We want to foster a community that is inclusive of every idea. You know, you might, I was going to say in my closing that I didn't get to was, you know, we might take different routes to get to the same result. You know, some people are raising netting birds, some people are in shelter, some people have two or three in the backyard, some people have 40,000. But at the end of the day, it's chickens or poultry in general, mm -hmm. poultry on grass mm -hmm. with movement. Yes. And if that happens, we're good. What gold nugget that they got from this conference that they're going to take it and use it for themselves? Maybe that's a good question. Uh, there are several things. I, I would say, uh, the thing I, I'm taking home with me that's going to make, that's going to help my farm make progress as a small business is the information from Brooks on shipping. I think my favorite thing has been the networking and camaraderie, mm -hmm. meeting fabulous folks like yourself, Aww. and of course lots of other growers, not just from Texas, but mm -hmm. all over the country. Yes. I think we're going to probably start selling chicken. like. Um, just not being afraid of that, mm -hmm. uh, of taking it to that next level, of getting you know an extra hundred, at least an extra hundred chickens, and just try to sell it to the local community and seeing how that goes. And after talking to so many people here about that, that's what some people are doing. Yeah, you know, and it's like, okay, it's probably not complicated. I'm making it complicated in my <laughs> mind, but it's probably it's doable. And I think that is probably the biggest thing of just talking to the people helps me maybe get more confidence and like, okay, maybe we could just do that. Maybe it's not such a big deal that I'm making it. Uh, and just to try it. So I've been uh, using a five gallon bucket with the nipple drinkers. Mm -hmm. And I've tried a number of different ways to not have the handles rip out. And somebody drilled a piece of half inch PVC through it and use that to hang the bucket. Shut up. Yeah, I was like, oh. I mean, there's bad learned business stuff. I've been, I've been doing this for 10, 15 years and it's like, I'm still 
<laughs> this is new and that's new and that's new and then I, 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 the rest of the discussion I was like I've already got the water set up on my farm and I didn't know need to know how to run lines mm -hmm. and then he shows the picture of the bucket and I'm like drawing it in my notebook like he did it this is great you know because you, you never know when you go to this conference you were in a different place because you've tried stuff you've worked all year so you can listen to the same talk three years in a row and get something new every time mm -hmm. there's also the people change there's more questions in that session and that's why it's nice to have everybody in a room someone will ask a question and you're like I didn't even know I needed to know that but I know I need to know that that's great and so I take notes furiously and then when I'm traveling home I go through the notebook and then organize from there. Yeah. <laughs> so if somebody that's interested in about uh, becoming an Ape APA member, yes. how can they get involved? Sure. It's as simple as just going to APA.org and checking out the website um, and uh, clicking on join and becoming a member. There's a couple of about pages, etc. And you can just become members right away. It's very affordable, really. Um, uh, and you can just be involved. And you can get a, you get a newsletter. You get um, access to an email listserv for asking questions to adult. I mean, like I'm on it. People can ask me a question right there. Now, truthfully, we didn't even know that we even belonged at that conference. However, we are starting our own business venture with the American Breast, so the timing was on point. If you're interested in seeing how we started in our venture, we're going to put that video off to the side and in the show notes below. Until the next video, let's grow together.